all parts in a baggie and set aside. Use a piece of rolled up construction paper so that you don't lose these pieces. You can use them to get them off. Then, roll up another piece of construction paper to plug up the hole. Using 180 grit sandpaper, scuff off the sheen. Go in one direction back and forth. If you do not do this, you will leave marks all over the ukulele. Using a vacuum, make sure to get all of the leftover dust off of the ukulele. That way it's in perfect condition to paint. Now go along with your painter's tape and mark off any parts that you do not want the paint to be on. Make sure to be as precise as possible with this. Use your finger to tightly seal the edges when you are done. Now go in with your black gesso. This will provide a base coat. You're going to go in one direction all over the ukulele. Make sure to paint very lightly so that it doesn't distort the sound. You can use a paintbrush to cut in around tricky edges. Make sure you use your brush to catch any drips before the ukulele dries. Now wait 24 hours before moving on to our next step. Use 220 grit sandpaper to scuff the entire ukulele before moving on to the painting. As you can see, I've taped off every part and covered up all of the holes that I do not want paint to get in. I used a small piece of wood to plug up this guy. Make sure to shake this can very well before you start painting. Spray in sweeping motion side to side with a slight overlap. You're going to apply three coats. Wait one minute in between. Wait 24 hours total before moving on to the galaxy step. We're going to be mainly using sea sponges. Grab your plate and water and unplug all of the holes. Lightly dab your sponge, placing colors all over your ukulele. This doesn't need to be too perfect because this is just our base coat. If we don't like something, we can fix it later. Make sure you're putting black all along the outside of your ukulele to really add dimension. After you've got all your colors on, you can go on with white to add the clouds. You can use a bigger sponge to blend. Use a wet paper towel in between coats to get off any excess paint you may not want. For our second coat, just place colors on top of each other. They don't have to be exactly where you put them on the first time. If you like where they are, then keep them the same. last coat, we're going to go in with our white paint and make it really vibrant, but also make sure to blend it so you don't have any harsh lines. On a paper plate, mix some white paint with a little bit of water. You're going to swish this all around and these are going to make our stars. We're going to be flicking our brush down and our hand up. Practice on a piece of cardboard to make sure you get off any excess paint. Then start to spread the stars around. Try to focus a little bit extra on the dark areas. And now we can start by doing the exact same process on the front.
Before you start the stars, take your extreme glitter and blotch it all over the green parts. You can also add it in any other spots you want to glisten. I did this on the back as well, I just didn't show it. Make sure that your paint has dried fully before you do this step. The paint is going to come out white, but don't be afraid, it will absolutely dry clear. You can use a very fine paintbrush to create bigger stars in the areas that need them. step is optional. If you like the black, then keep it that way. If not, using your extreme glitter, lightly blot all of the black parts of your ukulele. Be careful to use as little paint as possible during this. We do not want an excess buildup of glitter. I apologize for the shaking of my camera. Try to put new paint away from the paint you have already done and feather it back in. That way you don't have any harsh lines. While it's still wet, make sure that you clean up any excess glitter you may have gotten along the sides by blending it in. fun decals. It is very important that you choose white testers decal paper and not clear. If you choose clear, your decals will not show up on the black surface. Here are the places I'm going to put them. Print out a rough draft on regular paper so you can be sure of the exact size before you waste your decal paper. After you have allowed your ink to dry, you can go ahead and spray your decal paper with Krylon Crystal Clear Spray. This will seal in all of the colors. Wait 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Because this is white paper and our ukulele is black, if you want small details like the stars, you can print out a little bit of a black background. Or you can go ahead and just use the moon, which is what I ended up doing. Cut around your decal paper and then make sure that you're cutting very closely to the decal. Anything you do not cut out that is white will show up. Take your decal and submerge it into a bowl of water for about 30 seconds or until you see that the backing is starting to slide off. Use one finger to hold down the decal while you slide out the paper. You can then position your decal in place as it will still be able to slide. Smooth it to get out any air bubbles and use a paper towel to get out any excess water. Repeat the same process for your next decal. Then you can use a fine paintbrush to paint stars again on top of your moon. Make them different sizes so that they don't all just look like dots. After you have let the decals dry for 24 hours, you can then scuff your ukulele again with 400 grit sandpaper. Make sure to go very lightly, especially over the decals. Then continue to vacuum your ukulele to get out all of the dust. I used a different finish than I did for my last ukulele. I'm using a polycrylic, which I think worked out a lot better. It is very important to stir your polycrylic very thoroughly before you go ahead and paint your ukulele. Pour a little bit into a container, so that way you can make sure that you will not have a lot on your brush. It is also very important to do this in very light coats. i found that the polycrylic is very easy to work with and a little bit goes a long way. You'll have some time to go back and catch drips, but don't wait too long in between because you don't want any uneven spots.
just like in the previous steps, take your brush along the outsides to catch any drips before they have dried. You can also run your hand underneath on the dry side to catch any drips that may have fallen. Like I said previously, we're going to be doing three coats of this, sanding and vacuuming included. Make sure you wait 24 hours between each coat. Use a little stick to get out any drips that may have fallen in these holes. If you are having trouble taking off your paint, use an X-Acto blade to help you trace across the line, and that way you will not take up any paint. And this is our final product. I found that with this ukulele, patience is key. It did not take too long, but you definitely need to wait in between coats to make sure that everything is perfectly dry before moving on to the next steps. fun to the ukulele. I'll leave the link below where you can find him. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the size difference between the first soprano ukulele I designed and this tenor one. I'm also going to include a quick snippet of a cover I recorded so you can see that the sound did not change at all. I've been down so long, it look like up to me. They look up to me. I got fake people showing.